Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the channel here. Uh, cavity nesters is just all about trying to conserve our native cavity nesting birds. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to install or put on monofilament line to deter house sparrows from your birdhouse. I will say that this is kind of hit or miss as a sparrow deterrent. And one thing I have noticed is that it can sometimes also deter our native birds too. So my suggestion is wait until you've got a native bird who's active with the nest, um, at least like bringing a few things in and then quickly grab the nest. It shouldn't take too long, grab the nest box and install this and then set it back up. Um, I have also seen sparrows still harass the nest despite this being on. But what I've also noticed is that as long as they're not bonded to this nest box, never discovered it, and the nest box isn't in the same area that they've nested before, they won't add stuff to the nest. Now, what I can't vouch for is whether the house sparrows will attack a bird still. And so it kind of goes back to dealing with house sparrows. A deterrent buys you time, but what you really need to do is trap and dispatch. So I've got my nest box here, and actually everything's marked because I have had monofilament line on this one, but I just wanted to do a quick video because I think this would be super helpful for people. Um, when you do monofilament line, one thing is they say you six pound clear monofilament line. And when I say monofilament, that is fishing line. You can find it at Walmart or a I don't think a hardware store, but definitely like a sports shop like Cabela's or um, oh, what's the Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> so uh, they say to use six pound. And I agree with that because I have tried this with a thicker line. And uh, what happens is it deters everybody from using the nest. So go with six pound line. And again, do this after you know that a native bird is actually active with your box. So when you do this, everything starts with your entrance hole and you want to make sure that your line is one eighth of an inch from your nest hole. So really quick, let's talk about supplies that you're gonna need. Um, screwdriver, or you can use thumbtacks. It's probably a million times easier and I'm probably overcomplicating it. So if you have thumbtacks, it just makes life easier. I don't. So instead I have a screwdriver and screws. You can use a nail too, uh, but I like the screws because it's fat and that helps when you're winding your, your line on and stringing it up. Uh, with the thumbtack, same thing. It's kind of fatter, so it's easier to work with. So you'll need, you'll need something, something like a thumbtack or a screw or a nail or something. If you're using a nail, you'll need a hammer, but I'm not. Um, I really like to use an awl. It is a handy tool. You can find these at craft stores or hardware stores. They're really easy to find and they're super cheap. If you don't have an awl, again, a thumbtack or uh, the screw itself can mark. If it has like the, uh, the pointed end, you can mark your holes that way. Um, you will need your six pound monofilament line you will need scissors and you'll need a tape measure to mark that one eighth inch. Okay, so you start with your tape measure and um, you're just gonna try and find one eighth from your hole. This is, this is the one eighth mark, um, you know, I could do it this way. So this, this tape measure is in sixteenths, so you basically you get to the center of your hole and you position it, and uh, you go. Since it's in sixteenths, your one eighth mark will be two ticks over, and you find that two ticks, and you just drive your awl in there, or if you have a thumbtack, even better. So you, uh, yeah, you would uh, pop that in, and then you're going to do your other side. So I, I have my, you know, here's, here's the inch marker. So I go two ticks over and I just drive my all in and push it real good. So the next thing that you'll do is this is, this is to help you get started. What you're actually gonna do is end up marking up here. This has already been done, but I'll, I'll take you through it and marking down here using the, this, your one eighth markers as a guide. So we'll start here. And uh, I just like to 
you kind of just eyeball this, you know, you, you take your tape measure and you make sure that it's, you know, it's got your marked line here. And then you go ahead and you take your awl and you pop a hole and you just get it started. And then you do your next side and I'll do it over here. And you just make sure that your tape measure is lined up and you got to be really careful because like it's, it's easy to perceive this incorrectly. So, um, so you're going to do your other side and, you know, sometimes I do like the one eye open thing and, uh, you know, so I do that and then I would use my awl or use a thumbtack or something and pop it. And if you have a thumbtack, all you do is you push it all the way through and that's, that post is set. Now you've got to do your bottom section. And what I like to do, depending on your nest box height, um, you know, usually they're eight, eight, nine, ten inches. I like to go seven inches down from the top. And so, you know, here's here's going down seven inches. And again, I make sure, yeah, seven inches from the top. I make sure that I'm lined up with my um, hole near the uh, entrance hole. And then I, you know, I make sure that everything's straight and then I would just drive my awl down in there. And you're gonna do that the same over here. You just seven inches down and make sure that it's lined up with, you know, your entrance marker. And you just, you know, make sure it's lined up real good and pop it. So you start putting the screws in. So I guess, yeah, uh, did I mention? Yeah, you need screws or again, if you have a thumbtack, you would, use the thumbtack. So um, just get your screwdriver. Shorter screws are better. These are way too long, but it's all I have. So they're going to hang out a little. Let me get it going. And, you know, Sometimes it goes a little crooked. That's going to be okay. It won't be too bad. Um, it's, yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. And then it is critical with this one that you don't drive all the way through on the other side because if you have good bird nesting in there, you don't want anything to hurt it. So I'm not going to go too far down as I screw this in. So it's going to pop out. I'm definitely gonna open my box and check. So I've already got a little bit of a tip sticking through, so I'm gonna back that out and I'm good. And then that helps me kind of know how far down to screw this. Okay, so that is good. So now you take your line and get it going. I don't cut it until I'm done and you would just tie it off on the top. I'm only going to do one here because I actually don't want to have monofilament line on this just yet. I want to get a bird in here, um, but you know, you get it going, get it nice and tight. And then I only do one. And I also make sure that uh, as I, oh, I hope you can see that. Uh, there you can see there's the line okay so I make sure that it is not covering the hole when I do this so um yeah it's really hard to see that's why sparrows don't like it so <laughs> you take it and you just wind it and now I give it a cut and I have some slack and that slack is helpful because then um yeah, I don't, uh, I don't double wrap this at all. So I don't like, I don't do a thing where I would take it up one more. I just do one and that's again, so I don't um, deter my good birds. So just keep tying it. You wanna make sure that it's, it's tight when you string it. And I do just a few knots when I do this. So it's nice and tight and uh, like, uh, so hard to pick that up on camera. So here it is. There's no slack. It's super tight. That's what you want. Now, uh, when you do this, 
you also want to consider doing the top too. The top is a lot easier. So um, I already have the holes marked here. So when you're doing the top, um, again, I'm not really going to demonstrate the top. The top is really easy to do, but you uh, you don't have to do much measuring here. So you just uh, um, you get two holes here, and then I do two holes here. So that way it gives um, just some angles. So. And uh, when you do this, again, you want to make sure that you're not coming down on the other side because you don't want to injure any birds. So you don't want to go too far down. This one. And you just kind of feel it, make sure you're good. And then I've got this one. So I'm just gonna, yeah, you can see that. Okay, so do that. And again, you don't want to make it go through the other side. You could also, where'd my other screw go? Okay, you could also do it up here. I just think that that might be too much of an angle. So I'm just going to do this. Okay, that's good. And I'll do this side. Okay, and then when you string it, you would tie it up. And uh, so you would tie it on one of these, and then I would wrap it around. Sorry, it's wrap it around and then you do the next one. And I also want to make a X when I do this. So I'm going to go back around, I'd wrap it around and I'd do this too. Um, here's the thing about doing the top. You want to be careful because you, you don't want a bird to get tangled. So make sure that there's wide spaces and that the string is not loose, that it's very tight. Um, and if you're worried, don't do the top. But what, the reason you might wanna consider the top is what happens with sparrows is uh, one of them will come down on the top of the box, start singing, and that's his way of claiming the box and attracting to the box. So um, the idea behind this is that by stringing up the top, you prevent a house sparrow from singing on it. Um, the next thing here is, uh, you know, you want to make sure to cut, oof, so hard to show, um, cut any loose bits. So cut these off and you don't want any loose monofilament line hanging. You do not want your birds to get tangled up in this. So make sure everything is tight. Any loose bits are cut and uh, you are all set. So I hope that this video was helpful with the monofilament install. Um, I know when I first started, I wasn't quite sure how far away from the hole is. And, you know, I've seen some uh, diagrams, but there is such a difference between a video and a diagram. So again, I really hope this helps. I'm sorry I didn't string up the whole thing, but uh, hopefully this kind of shows you what we've got. Again, I always, I have to angle it so you can kind of see the line there. It's so faint. Um, but that kind of shows how this is done. Um, I will have another video on how well monofilament line actually works as far as a sparrow deterrent. And when I have that video available, I will link it uh, below. So stay tuned for that. And thank you all for watching.